Good morning, class. I believe you guys are doing good this morning. And I want to assume you all had a wonderful and a splendid weekend. Today is another day for uh, our lectures and uh, our lessons. And, <coughs> excuse me, this morning our focus is going to be on cylinders and cones. But I want to believe before uh, starting this week's lesson, I want to believe that uh, uh, at the course of our discussions last week, talking about bearing and distance, and also looking at Pythagorean's theorem, and also Pythagorean's triple, that you guys really enjoyed the video lessons. And I hope there are no questions pertaining uh, those uh, topics we've uh, looked at. And also remember that in the previous uh, lesson, we said Pythagorean's triple is any three whole numbers that obey the rule c squared equals a squared plus b squared, given that a, b, c are the three whole numbers and all of those. So if, there are, if there's any section or any part of the lesson that uh, wasn't clear to you, please try as much as you can to go through the videos again and you can always bring it up in our class discussion. All right, having said that, this morning my focus, like I said earlier, is on cylinders and cones. So this uh, lesson will be through Mondays 18th today to Friday 22nd. And I'm going to break the video into two parts. So when you watch the first part, don't stop there. You look out or watch out for the second part. Also try as much as possible to see it. And also take care, I want you to note that at the end of each part, there are exercises. For this part one, you are expected to submit the exercises before the end of today's class, today, Monday 18th. Submit the exercises, and I'll show you how to do that. We want to make our submission be private from now henceforth, since I've been able to move everyone of you to my personal Google Classroom. Uh, your, your, your exercises, assignments, tasks, quizzes, you submitted personally, so no, no other member of the class will see it except your teachers. Uh, having said that, let's now dive into the topic proper, or to the uh, lesson proper. Here are the learning <coughs> objects, excuse me. <coughs> At the end of the lesson, learners should be able to, one, identify cylinders and cones. Two, sketch the nets of a cylinder and a cone. Three, states and apply the formula to calculate the total surface areas of a cylinder and a code. Four, state and apply the formula to calculate the volume of a cylinder and a code. Five, apply, solve applied problems on cylinders and code. So those are the five lesson or learning objectives. Please let's put, take that to heart as we progress. And uh, we shall look at some keywords. These keywords will be used during this lesson, so it's important to be explained or define them. One, net. In this context, a net is a plane shape that can be folded and or rolled to make a solid. We shall see examples of net as we progress. Surface area. This is the area of the outer surface of a solid. When we say cone, we mean a solid shape with a vertex above a circular base. Slant height means the distance from the tip of a cone to a point on the circumference of its base. Please take note of those keywords as you shall see them, like I said earlier, uh, in the nearest future in this lesson. Now let's go into the prayer lesson proper definition. Cylinders, what are cylinders? A cylinder is a three-dimensional shape having two circular faces and this curved surface. 
So here is a picture of a cylinder. Here the, you can see the face, the circular face one at the top, and another circular face two. While we have the curved surface. So here is a curved surface. So this is a typical uh, picture of a cylinder. Okay. All right. Now when we say the net of a cylinder, what are we talking about? Like I explained earlier, I said net is any plane uh, surface or any plane shape uh, that can be folded or to make a solid shape. So here is a, here is a net of uh, the cylinder. So the question that will come to your mind is how can I, how can this form a cylinder? Don't worry, I'm going to show you practically uh, using GeoGebra on uh, internet resources to show you how to form a cylinder from this net. So if you have to produce any cylinder, if you have to make any cylinder, let's say with a paper or with a cardboard, this is where you start from. This is how you begin to get a perfect cylinder. So you said net of a cylinder uh, is a plane, is a plane shape you get if a hollow cylinder is opened out as seen below. So this cylinder you see at the top is what has is what produced this net. Now quickly let me show you how the this net can produce a cylinder. Let me show you how the net produces the cylinder. Uh, give me a minute. I'll do that on GeoGebra. Alright. So here's the net. I hope you can see the net. Now watch what happens as I drag this button to the left. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Can you see that? Wow, is this not amazing? It's folding up. It's folding up. Wow, this is great. All right, can you see that? And at the end, it has produced a cylinder for us. So can you see how the net of the cylinder translated into a cylinder from a 2D object into a 3D object? So the net is a 2D object, the plane shape, while the result of the net, after folding it, it produces a what? 3D object. Hmm? A three-dimensional object. Let's, 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 see, let's see again. Let's see again. Now let me open it up. Going back to the plane shape, which is the net of the cylinder. Wow, this is great. And I drag it again, it will fold up to form the cylinder. This is lovely. I feel like doing it again and again. How do you feel? I believe it feels same. Wow, can you see how it's putting up and coming down? All right, so this is great. So that's how the net of a cylinder produces the cylinder. So if you want to produce or you want to form any cylinder, all you need to do is to form a net, create a net that looks like just uh, exactly what I've seen or what you've just seen now. That was amazing, uh, isn't it? All right, let's proceed, let's proceed with our lesson. Now, uh, let's look at some practical exercises before we go further with our lesson. Okay? Now, you will need paper or tin card, scissors, and a ruler for this exercise. Also, remember that for a circle of radius R, the diameter D is equal to 2R. The circumference of the circle C is equal to 2 pi R. The area of the circle A is equal to pi R squared, where pi is approximately equal to 3.14 or 22 over 7. All right, you need all these facts to uh, solve what and attempt these questions. Now, question 1A says, cut a stripe of paper 5 centimeters wide by 22 centimeters long. Roll the paper to make a cylinder, a cylindrical surface. What is the height of the cylinder? What is the circumference of each circle at the open ends of the cylinder? Calculate the area of the rectangle you cut. You cut out in part A. Does this area change if you roll the rectangular or the rectangle into a cylinder? Measure to the nearest centimeters the diameter of 
one of the circles at the top end of the cylinder. Use this value to calculate the circumference of the circle. Does your answer agree with your answer in part D? Pause this video. Carry out these practical exercises or exercise and post your answers privately to me. I'll show you how to do that uh, before the end of this class. All right, let me continue with my lesson. So next, we're going to be looking at the surface area of a cylinder. So for a cylinder of height H and circular faces of radius R, the area of the two circular faces is given by, by R squared plus by R squared. You agree with me since they are circular faces. And we just recalled that the area of a circle is given by this formula. So and it's having two circular faces, which is this one at the top, uh, the circular face at the top, and so we said the circular face at the top, and the one at the bottom. I hope you can also do circular faces. All right, so we want to calculate the two circle, uh, circular faces, the area of the two circular faces, you add pi r squared plus pi r squared, which you give 2 pi r squared. The curved surface is equivalent to a rectangle uh, or a plain rectangle. You saw that in the next. This curved surface is a plain rectangle. It's nothing but a rectangle. Hence. The length of rectangle is equal to circumference of circular face. That is the length. It should be equal to circumference of, because we use the rectangle to form a hollow, a kind of core, a hollow core. And that is why we use 2 pi r. You can see pi, instead of the, the question my mind, I want to ask, since it's a circular plane, or why or is a rectangular plane rather, why can't we use length times breadth to calculate the area or the length? Okay, why not length? The length of the rectangle, why not length? Just length. Well, because we have used the plane shape to form a kind of core, core surface. And you know that anything that's be circle, core, pi, pi has to come in. So that's why we represent the length of the rectangle to to be the circumference of the circular face, which is 2 pi r, then the breadth of rectangle is h, that is the height. So the breadth of the rectangle is seen as h, and the area of rectangle is equal to, that means the area will be the length times the breadth, 2 pi r times h, which is equal to 2 pi r h. So this is the area of the curved surface. This curved surface over here, the area is 2 pi r h from this point to this point. All right, is that taken? So we've got to the area of the curved surface. We've got to the area of the top and the bottom uh, circular faces. So therefore, to calculate the total surface area of a closed cylinder, closed, let's take note, closed cylinder, is going to be equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And you can decide to also factorize uh, 2 pi r. When you factorize 2 pi r, you can see 2 pi r is common to both term 2 pi r. We have we have uh, 2 pi r equals we have 2 pi r equals r plus h. I hope you can see that factorization. Hmm? I hope you understand the factorization. You can see that it's a 2 pi r at the left term. There is another 2 pi r at the right term. So when we bring it out, we factor this out. What's left here is a single r. What is left here is h. So that will be 2 pi r into r plus h. All right? Okay. So let's see the first example, solved example. The question says, a cylindrical cup has a circular base of radius 7 centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters. Take the value of pi to be 22 over 7. Calculate A, its curved surface area, B, the area of its circular base. All right, so let's apply the formula. The formulas we just derived. So the first part, A, the curved surface area is equal to 2 pi r h, as we've seen earlier. 
So that is equal to 2 times 22 over 7, which is 5, times 7, which is the radius, times 12, which is the height. So 7 factor out 7. So we left it 2 times 22 times 12, and that would be 528 centimeters squared. Okay, so that is uh, the first, the answer to the first question A, the core surface area. Then B, the question says uh, also the area of its circular base. So the area of its circular base is given as A, which is equal to pi r squared. Okay, pi r squared. So, and our pi is given as 22 over 7. The r is 7 centimeters times 7 squared. 7 squared means what? 7 times 7. Good. So, 7 will factor out 7. Next, multiply 22 by 7. So, 22 times 7 is 154 centimeters squared. So this is the area of the circular base, one of the circular base. So uh, if you want to get the two circular bases, multiply this by two, two times this, and that will give you the answer. I hope that was clear. All right, so uh, exercise one. You also need to pause this video at this junction and attempt this exercise. In this exercise, round the final answers to two significant figures. So what the exercise say? Calculate the curved surface area of a cylindrical container with these dimensions. Take the value of pi to be 3.14. A, radius 30 centimeters, height 36 centimeters. B, radius 60 centimeters, height 50 centimeters. C, Diameter 5 centimeters, height 30 centimeters. D, diameter 58 centimeters, height 56 centimeters. E, radius 15 centimeters, height 1.2 centimeters. All right. Next, uh, we shall be looking at the volume of a cylinder. Now, I want you guys to recall that in your previous class, that is in GS1, you, you found that the volume of a prison is given by the volume, is given by equal to, is given by the area of end piece. Here is the end piece for this particular prison, and here is the end piece for this particular prison, times the distance between the end pieces. The area of this end piece times the distance between the end pieces. That was how you looked at the volume of the prism in your previous class, which is in GS1. For example, in the figures above, notice that volume of the cube, which is, this is a rectangular base prism. The volume of the cube is equal to length times breadth times height, which is equal to LBH. That's the volume of this cube. Then the volume of the triangular prism, this triangular base prism, is given by 1 over 2 times A times B. That is the formula for the area of a triangle times the height, which is equal to 1 over 2 ABH. So the volume of the prism depends on the, the face, the shape at the end face. Okay, it's, it changes. But it's made the same. But if you look at it carefully, what you have is simply the base area times height. The base area times height. Okay, that is the basic or the general formula for volume of the prism. All right, or, or volume of any 3D shape. Now, since a cylinder is a special kind of prism, hence the volume of the cylinder is equal to the area of the circular face times the height of cylinder. And the area of the circular face is pi r squared, height is h. So that is pi r squared times h. Therefore, the volume of the cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. So at this junction, you've been able to successfully derive the volume of the formula to calculate the total surface area of the cylinder, 2 pi r into r plus h, 
and the volume of a cylinder pi r squared h. Before I end the video, I would like to give you an example on that also. Example says, a wooden roller is one meter long and eight centimeters in diameter. Find A, its volume in centimeter cube, B, its mass in grams, if one centimeter cube of the wood has a mass of 0 0.7 grams. Solution. We're given H as one meters, which is equal to 100 centimeters. We're given the diameter as eight centimeters, therefore the radius is four centimeters. Remember, the radius is diameter over two. So for part A, the volume of the wooden roller will be equal to pi r h, pi r squared h, since the wooden roller is, uh, has the shape of a cylinder. So our uh, pi is taken as 22 over 7 times the radius times the radius, that is the meaning of r squared, the radius radius is 4 times 4 times the height, 100. So when you multiply all the numbers at the numerator, you get uh, 35,200 divided by 7. And when you divide that, uh, that will be 50 or 5,028.57 centimeter cube. All right, please take note of volume. Volume is, uh, is a cubic squared, cubic or cubic unit rather. Why uh, area is square unit? Volume is cubic unit, area is squared unit. Please take note, it's very, very important. Don't calculate volume and add a squared. No, add a cube, centimeter cube, meter cube, a uh, uh, feet cube, inches cube. Please take note, very good note of, uh, of that. I won't say that. Let's look at the second part of the question. Now, if one centimeter cube is equal to 0 0.7 grams, then 5,028.57 centimeter cube will be equal to 0 0.7 times 5,028.57. All right? And that will, that will be equal to 3,519.99999 grams. And to four significant figures, that would be equal to 3,520. So I believe you enjoyed this video, and I believe you understand every concept explained. If you have any further questions, please post it uh, underneath this video uh, during this, uh, as we progress in this lecture. So here is our exercise two. Now you have to do this exercise from your new general mathematics textbook for JSS2. And that is exercise 19B, number 4B, and C, page 170. Then question two should be exercise 19C, number two and four of page 171. And here's the assignment which will be due in our next class. On, on a, the assignment is due, let me check, on Wednesday, the 20th of May. Wednesday, the 20th of May, between your assignments, just like I showed you guys earlier. The assignment is from New General Mathematics, textbook for JSS2, exercise 19B, number 3 and 5, page 170, exercise 19C, number 8 and 10 of page 171 and 172. All right, so thank you very much for your audience. I want you guys to also uh, watch out for the second part of this lesson, which is going to be on cone. We talked about cylinder, and I believe you understand every single concept thought. So if you have a questions, like I said earlier, please post your questions. All right, feel free to ask any question relating to what we talked about. So thank you very much for your time, and do have a wonderful day ahead.